Welcome to the Engage 416 podcast. I'm your host, Sean Garris, with the Integrated Gang Prevention Task Force and the Engage 416 Initiative. Today, I have a special guest all the way from Brazil, uh, Master Silvio Baring, uh, who I have known for, I'm going to say, probably over 20 years. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much, man. Thank you for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, it's a long time, man. Yes. It's a lifetime. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's been, uh, like I said, 20 years. I started with uh, uh, Scott Schilling under you as well, and then we traveled uh, all the way through that journey up until now, 20 years later, where I'm a black belt under, underneath you, yourself. Um, and, uh, you know, it's uh, been a loyalty that I've, I've actually enjoyed uh, since that, and the journey's been amazing. So thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you, thank you. You know, there's a... Uh, uh, it's a long task. It has a, uh, it's a lot of commitment. You remember when it was the beginning. Very few people involved. It wasn't, wasn't the way it is right now. Uh, Jiu-Jitsu is evolving a lot. And it's growing. It's the most growing martial art in the world right now. But in the beginning, it was very few people. You were part of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so one of the pioneers here in the country. And uh, it's an honor for me that and, uh, to be able to work uh, as well with the, with the uh, uh, public uh, enforcement uh, because uh, you guys are the guys who protect my family, my friends, and myself. So uh, I, I'm not a cop, and I, uh, and I believe that if I if I born again, I I would be, you know. Yeah, but for my 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 whole life, I didn't think about it. So at the end, you know, I became an instructor here helping here as much as I, uh, as I could to you guys uh, you guys are the you guys really help here the growth uh, I believe uh, was Warren Border the first one that brought us in you mm-hmm. know for some shooting <laughs> <laughs> I got lucky you know that was a, uh, always a, a good opportunity to be you know around people that really committed with with uh, we protect people and save lives. No, you, yeah, you've been uh, so working with the police service as well. You come up every time you come uh, over from Brazil. You come over to Canada or you travel in the U.S. But you work with a lot of uh, law enforcement police officers uh, uh, to to help us um, train properly. Because you know, not every police officer is a martial artist. Um, you know, we I I've chosen that path just because of my path but with wrestling and it, it seemed like a natural progression when I got older. I thought, you know what, I might, I gotta keep doing something and jujitsu was the natural progression for me. But there's a lot of officers that don't do it. So when you come up, you actually put on seminars for us and officers that aren't involved in, you know, that aren't, I guess, uh, exposed to jujitsu, get exposed to jujitsu, come and, come and see what you offer and then often they buy into a club or something like that or, or get involved after that. Yeah, I think the most important thing is uh, uh, really uh, push um, them to the training uh, uh, mindset, you know, uh, to go and find somewhere they can train and get can get in better shape. And if it's related with self-defense and then most related with police defense uh, as possible, better. But if it's not just a grappling uh, martial art will... will help a lot uh, to get the skill to control someone with, you know, uh, e- fa- fastly and easily with the bare hands if it's necessary. But you know what, it's interesting, you know, uh, I started here, you know, right when I, when I started to come here, close to the uh, 2000s, and um, that was an amazing uh, uh, opportunity, you know, to have a, uh, to work with the police here internationally. And I came back to Brazil and I, and I worked with the police there as well. But in 2010, I was invited to be a part of a course in Rio de Janeiro uh, uh, Police College there uh, to become an instructor there. And I, I thought, you know what, now, to become part of that course, you had, uh, you, you must have 10 years of experience with public uh, 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 services, uh, public, uh, Public, public security, and I said, okay, I have it. I have it in Canada. I have it here in Brazil. But I found out I had no idea what I'm doing, man. You know, <laughs> I was teaching self-defense, uh, the greatest self-defense, the self-defense that I learned, mm-hmm. which I believe is really good, and I and I trust in it. 
and I, I, I trust so much that I can teach that, you know, and, you know, to everyone and, and with with faith. I, I know that works, but uh, that wasn't uh, police defense at all. Mm -hmm. And I, I just found out, and I, I went to that course, and I did a very good self defense there. I, I got, um, uh, you know, very well. Uh, the opportunity was great mm -hmm. because we had to show you know, our skills there and show the options that we could bring uh, to help. They, they redo the manual there for, for the police college, mm -hmm. the Academy of Police in, in Rio de Janeiro, civil police. Uh, and that, that was an amazing opportunity. So during my actions there, defending headlocks or bear hugs, whatever, I did really well. I, I did exactly the self-defense that I learned, the grace of self-defense. But when they, uh, put the, uh, the, 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 the gear on me, mm -hmm. I got killed <laughs> because I got, un, you know, unarmed. I lost my, my gun, you know, uh, two or three times, you know, by, by another black belt in Jiu-Jitsu, uh, but a police officer who knows was developing that course as well. So that's why he said, you know, man, you're very good in self-defense if, if you're unarmed. Mm -hmm. But if you're armed, you, you, know, you don't know how to, to retain it, you don't know how to protect it. So then I start to learn, you know, more uh, deflecting, uh, blocking, shielding, uh, to protect the building. And that makes make sense a lot as well uh, for the first step in self-defense, you know, which is keep controlling the distance, controlling the contact. So I believe that uh, helped me a lot uh, to improve my understanding over prevention, position, you know, all the, uh, you know, all the cycle, you know, all the all those, uh, fundamentals that uh, bring the police to have more awareness and, uh, and that all citizens should, should have, especially if you're a martial artist, which uh, brings you uh, to become a reference of security and safety in your neighborhood, in your friends, your family. So if you don't have the you know, basic understanding of over security and safety, that would, because uh, what I found out first, man, that security and safety doesn't, doesn't exist. What exists is sensation. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can have a sensation that's safe and secure, but uh, you, you, you're not sure. Know, anything can happen, so you you gotta be aware of possibilities, and uh, and as much as you you teach self defense, that I believe that that was the, the something that I that I got from that course that uh, helped me uh, as well. Every time I was coming back here, and I had a diff uh, I start to have a different approach mm -hmm. for self defense with more verbal uh, self defense, use the authority, you know. You know, better position, like I said, more more um, uh, prevention, more aw awareness, and especially for the kids, mm -hmm. that was a big improvement for self defense of the kids, because a lot of people uh, talk about anti bullying. It's not, an, you know, anti bullying. Is, you know, it's, it's bully prevention. I believe that that's the key. It's not anti bullying. Anti bullying is a fight back. Okay, I understand fight back is the goal, you know. I understand that. You, you gotta be ready to fight back, to, you know, to uh, gain confidence and uh, defend yourself. But uh, uh, sometimes, you know, and that was one thing that I found out when I started to, to train that with the police, and it was the same time. Uh, one day, we were involved in a course for some instructors. Uh, and uh, I was I was trying to bring these guys to another level of self-defense, you know, more more verbal self-defense, more positioning. But they didn't know self-defense at all, so I had to train their them in self-defense. So that was my first approach to that kind of uh, of uh, line of self-defense. And I said, okay, so I need to teach those guys what happened. I start to kick their butt, you know, go there, throw them on the ground, choke them, arm bar, blah, blah. So the same thing all over and over again. I was doing the same thing, but ver verbalizing, which was a, a good part, but it's still very physical. And one of them, uh, this guy missed the, one of the classes, was the stick that just uh, uh, 
for for defend uh, any any weapon i decided to just do the stick defense which is the more simple mm -hmm. closest to the real real weapon defense but uh, the one would, would be easy to, to to teach them to do it and this guy missed this class i said man this guy gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna fail him i'm gonna kick him out <laughs> first chance i have and then when when we went to the test and everybody was there, and, and this guy was, everybody was doing great tests, and he was doing great tests as well, verbalizing really well, the basics, the guard, blah, 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 prevention, and uh, uh, all, the, all, the, all the foundations were done. And then, okay, let's go for the sick defense. And I turned to them and said, okay, guys, you, you ready to, to do this? Can I, can I really attack you? Yes, yes, no problem, you're ready, you're ready, until everybody was ready. So I got a stick, and there was a, that was a really, really heavy stick there, man. Thin but heavy, and uh, I turned to them and say, "Man, you know, you know, you guys, you guys be gotta be ready, okay? First one, okay, boom, boom, defend, defend, one after the other. So it was six guys, and this guy was the, the last one, the sixth guy. So after the fifth guy defend, I turned to him and say, "Okay, you know, what about you? Is you ready?" He said, "Yes, I am, but don't want to do it." Hmm. Sir. You don't want to do it, master. You're gonna, you're gonna hurt me. <laughs> you're gonna ruin my life and ruin our life. Please, drop it down. And I said, oh, "Son of a." <laughs> 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 so he at this at that point I I learned it. You know, uh, the, the, the I think was the biggest lesson as a, as a martial art instructor for self defense. Something that I was trying to make them they do. The only the only guy who did it was the one had the, didn't didn't have the empowerment mm -hmm. to pay to 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 buy the situation. Said, "Oh no, you want to attack me? Just do it." Mm -hmm. Everybody did it. He wasn't, you know, he was ready to negotiate. He was he was ready to talk, and everybody else uh, forgot it. <laughs> they they should at least try, and he did it, and so. I had to. I had to put my head down and say, "Okay, you got it, man. That, mm -hmm. That's what I'm looking for." Yeah. So he teach me what I want to really want to go, and that uh, showed me as well that every time you you emotionally emotionally involved in a situation, it's easy to negotiate. Mm -hmm. So if anybody gets mad, sad, uh, uh, frustrated, whatever, angry. Uh, that's easier to go and find a way to talk. But if the person wants really to hit you in the cold blood, mm -hmm. we'll do it. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> so you gotta read it. And that was, I think, was the biggest lesson that I learned. And that helped me both sides. You know, helped me understand that uh, the prevention, the disengagement, the you know. The, Escaping that that the, the police defense was bringing to my my knowledge, uh, uh, re, uh, weapon retention, wep weapon defense, uh, that was helped me to start with the beginners in jiu-jitsu for yeah. for self defense, and the, for the other side, I was you know everyone's a beginner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I go to police college. Everybody, everybody's a beginner, man. Right. And you know that. So, and they have very few classes, very few hours there to become good. So, as mm -hmm. as, as as close as it could be to the very very important foundation from a stand up position or on the ground position to make the first understand they they need to use authority mm -hmm. and learn how to talk to someone. So I put them. You know, one guy on the ground, everybody around, say, hey, if you're convincing, everybody thumbs up. If you're yeah. not convincing, thumbs down. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you gotta stand up. What are you gonna do? Mm -hmm. So I come closer, try to stand up. What are you gonna do? Try to stand up, boom, slap the head. Come on, what are you gonna do, man? Mm -hmm. You gotta say something, come on. Mm -hmm. Talk to me. Hey, step back. Hey, guys, thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs down, boom, slap the head, come on. Talk to me. Use authority. Say, sir, step back. Okay. No, no. It's okay. Okay. So improve the authority. So you start to teach these people uh, and telling them, you know, you're here to train, and you know, God is giving you a chance. Mm -hmm. 
on the field, you don't have the second chance, the second chance to cause a first good impression. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, it, the communication part is huge for us because as a police officer, I don't know a lot of police officers actually want to actually engage physically with somebody just because of the, you know, you don't know what's going to happen. Every time we come to a fight, there's always a gun in, in the fight because we, we have a gun on our side. So for me, even with my my background in wrestling and jiu-jitsu, uh, boxing and MMA, you know what, I don't want to touch anybody. I really don't. I would rather communicate to them, you know, and if it's the last resort, if I, you know, if somebody pushes me, tripped, you know, I'm tripped and I fall on my back, at least I have that confidence that I'm here, I can handle myself because of jiu-jitsu, and you know what, I'm not going to panic because I think the biggest thing when we don't train and we get into situations like that, panic sets in and panic can kill us. So. Uh, I think it's great that you know we talk. You talk about the verbalization and and you you know your journey that that it's yeah you know what it needs to be there you know it can't be just you know go in and start beating uh, beating the hell out of somebody <laughs> you know that it doesn't work these days yeah ne never never should you know never, never, I I believe never worked you know uh, in old days you know the, the the approach with you know like a the, the like the old school, they used to come and look right about a slap in the head or mm -hmm. slap in the, on the neck or something like that, you know, to, to give like a, you know, a, a warm up or or, <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. I believe that that was a was something really um, natural, uh, even at home, you know, the treatment, you know, uh, was a di different education, it was a more physical. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so I believe that you know part of part of the progress uh, the, the progress uh, on on the field for training for self defense training for police uh, defense training uh, uh, I believe that you know a big, um, I, I'm sorry to say that but I have to say the truth uh, most of the police officers that came for uh, the last generations they didn't want to be police officers that's a good job. So a lot of people decide to be police officers by you know opportunity, but some of them they didn't born to be there, so they have to learn it. It's not in their their nature to be you know to lead by you know uh, authority, mm -hmm. you know to step on the on, on the uniform with the uniform and people see is a cop in the uniform. That's what I, what I say you know like uh, some people they they put the uniform but the uniform is not enough. It's not enough. You gotta have, you know, to to put an armor, you know, in the past, you know, the, the uh, uh, with the, with the knights, the the, ar the armor they put on could kill them if they are not ready to to wear it. This is the same for a police officer, I believe, and, and even for martial artists. If you're a black belt, you gotta wear your black belt. You know, when you put your armor on, you gotta have authority in there. It must be a black belt in that armor. So it must be someone that. Uh, you know, uh, can address himself, or can be helpful, you know, can be a reference, you know, and uh, with a posture, with a position, with a, with a education, whatever. But I believe that, you know, was something that uh, is more important than anything else. So if I can, if I can leave a, 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 a police defense course with uh, the whole people involved in the course, understanding What's the base? What what is posture? What's position? What you know? What is authority? Just by you know people seeing, looking at looking at you. If I can improve that in someone, and and if I can teach this person to talk, you know, just uh, uh, diplomatically, you know, uh, politely, but with authority, uh, it's done. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm more than happy. Uh, you know. I leave it. all the, the all, all the physical contact as much as I like it, man. And I believe that's necessary, you know. But I know how it works, you know. When we start to go physical, everybody gets crazy, and everybody gets so empowered by the physical, you know, uh, understanding over very simple things. Because if you learn just, just a very simple thing, you're a different person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In grappling, that's how it works. After the first class, if you go back home and have a twin. Mm -hmm. And you do the first jiu-jitsu class, you go back home, you have a twin, you're going to, you know, just spank your twin there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
You know, I I, uh, I want to go back to the anti-bullying. You talked a little bit about that. You know, martial arts and, and with kids is such a big thing now for, you know, kids that are getting bullied in school and, uh, you know, just, you know, they don't know what to do. And parents are kind of like, you know, what's a bit... It's not about... It's the, the defending, yes, but it's more about the self-esteem. When a child comes into a martial art like Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, they learn how to, to fight. They gain confidence in the room as they're doing that. And uh, when that when that occurs, they carry themselves differently within um, within um, uh, anywhere in school. And I can tell you, even it happens with with adults. And I, I hope my brother doesn't kill me with this <laughs> this story. But you know, he was working for you know a, a a profession down in in the U.S. And he wasn't a police officer, but the <coughs> the, the bosses were kind of bullying him around, you know, and just. He started doing jujitsu and he started doing MMA, and then all of a sudden they backed off. They're like, "Well, so there was because he was a di different char a character afterwards. There was some c confidence building, right? Um, do you see that in your your students? You know, when they come in and you know maybe a little timid, and then when they you know after a little bit, do you see them just kind of? Yeah, yeah, that's natural. You know, is is interesting because of, uh, with some people. Uh, you need to build that on them, like you know, it's not, it's, you, you can you can make them good on jujitsu, but their posture, uh, you know, their their mentality. Sometimes you, you don't change the, the whole thing. Don't make the you know become a positive positive person. Some some people are are negative, and that's and that's what the, how they are. And then we we know we know a lot of black girls. They are negative. You know, they are always complaining. They they have three problems for one solution. You know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's funny. Yes, it's, it's this, this is a personality. But you know, for sure, if you see them, uh, they are different than, than, than uh, just the, you know average people. That they are not in, in the same level of understanding, you know, physical uh, uh, contact. You know, it, it, we we know a lot of people. Even they are, they are good on rolling. They are good on fighting in the sport. They are very afraid of uh, real situation. You know, they don't. They don't want to get engaged in a fight. No, never. You know, I'm. A, I'm the one of these people. You know, I, I hate it. I don't. I don't want. I don't. Don't like to be in a fight. You know, and uh, but but for years in my life, I was the one who used to say, you know what? I you know I I, I give one one bull to them to go to go in a fight, but you know the whole cattle to 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 stay in there. Mm -hmm. So. It was all about pride, you know. You know, I can't accept talking about my mom or if you see that. It was 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 a lot of pride, but I learned that you know what, offenses are it's a choice, and we we gotta train that. It's not not just saying that. It's easy to turn this. Oh, easy, it's beautiful. Oh, offense is a choice. Uh, you get offended by choice. You know, if it's a true, it's a true. If it's a lie, it's a lie. Okay, that's it, man. But you know, you, you know, just that is not enough to make, make you, you know, change your attitude when you get offended. Mm -hmm. You gotta train to be don't be offended. Mm How -hmm. train your mind to don't be offended. So uh, we gotta talk about it. You, you know, make the you know uh, uh, people repeat it and think about it. You know. Mm -hmm. And create the scenarios over over triggers that we can identify that can help these people to uh, well, when they would uh, change or just uh, uh, pull that trigger, they will act different. They will they will uh, be under control. Uh, so we the, the the problem that I have now is is emotional intelligence as self defense mm -hmm. and and. and uh, Let's see in, in English because I'm thinking in Portuguese. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because uh, security and safety in, in in English that's what I what I learned in Portuguese. Segurança is just segurança, just just security. But safety here yeah, and security have a you know a, a little different meaning that that complement each other. And so in Portuguese, just if I say se security will be enough, mm -hmm. but uh, not here. So I believe that you know always uh, when I when I say uh, in English safety and security, I go uh, close it what I want what what I mean. But uh, I I, be, I believe the self defense part, like I said, you know, in the beginning was a, was a was a natural thing that I that I was bringing with my knowledge as a as a 
as a black belt in, in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and under the, the Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, mm -hmm. but I'm very proud to represent and I, I really defend the, the Gracie self-defense as the, the first part of uh, learning Jiu-Jitsu. And uh, because I have no uh, self-defense, I have no strategy. Mm -hmm. Self-defense is about, you know, just a question and an answer. Mm -hmm. you, you ask me a question, I give you an answer. You put a hand here, I put this, blah, blah, blah. So it was easy. Uh, and then also, the self-defense always bring leverage, bring momentum, bring, uh, you know, uh, proper positioning. So the techniques are, are, are pretty clean. There's a lot of judo there in the self-defense, mm -hmm. a lot of trolling. So uh, land properly, troll properly, all these basics that evolve in our own self-defense training help the start in jiu-jitsu. And like, uh, 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 you know, w w when you're gonna train uh, police defense and, and uh, someone who that never did any, any, any kind of martial arts, I believe the most important part of the training is make these people start to think about, you know, go find somewhere to to challenge themselves more often, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, and really train something, train some jiu-jitsu, some judo, some wrestling, you know. Yeah. You know, and, and I think that's the, you know, the, the great thing about having the police officers, they're, they're forced to come in and actually learn first. Because uh, there's, there's officers that, that don't have any backgrounds in martial arts, but they're forced to come in to do uh, annual training. I was part of that, I used to teach, teach at our college. You would come in and you would show us some techniques, then we would take your your techniques and we would teach them. And then when they go, where where did you learn that? And we, we tell them and then we give them the opportunity or we'd explain, hey, there's different clubs here, different clubs here, or even at the police college, we have a, we have a Sunday, it's still going on. Um, uh, I think it's still every Sunday in the mornings, there's still a workout. Um, but it's it's the, you know, getting the opportunity to practice the skill more over and more over. And when you do that, you start to build that kind of, uh, you know, it's it's the confidence. But the other thing too is the you have that, um, you know, you 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 don't have to inflict your authority on people as much because you know you have a skill set that you can. And you talk about you know, um, I guess uh, what was what was the words you were using? I can't remember. But it was uh, that's my concussion coming to play. I forget things. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's about uh, you know not not jumping to the gun right away it's, it's and that's not a good analogy with policing but um you know not jumping to violence right away or putting your hands on somebody it's about you know knowing you have some sort of uh skill set i don't have to use it right away i can use verbalize my 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 talking i can give you instruction um but because i've practiced so well, much my tolerance for stupidity Let's, let's say that is is higher than most people because I can I know that okay I, I don't have to lay my hands on you because you know it's not time yet I, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna turn you into a pretzel you know eventually if you don't stop 